Hi everyone, welcome to back to the 10 minute product podcast where we serve you 10 minutes of concise and to the point advice on how to resolve particular challenges faced by product leaders. Your hosts today are Christian and Jonas, two old timers in product leadership at startups, big tech and large corporations. Today's topic is how to be successful during the first 100 days of starting a new product leadership role. So we've all started from scratch multiple times, haven't we, Christian? Absolutely. And whether you're starting in a new company or whether you're taking over a big area of your existing company, when you join, uh, you have certain things you want to do. We've all tried to understand you know, the situation, uh, meet the often very different expectations from colleagues and bosses. And it's critical. Uh, it's a critical time uh, and that can make the difference between a success or failure long term in your role. So what we wanted to cover are a few areas that we think are really important. And I'll start with the first one, which is understanding the company and getting to know your team and your stakeholders. So first thing we do is interview leadership, interview stakeholders, interview your team, literally set up one on ones with people, find out what they're aiming for, find out what their goals are, you need to learn who they are, what they want to achieve. And in that way, you can, you know, in the future, align with them and figure out how to have a coexistence, let's say in the company. Secondly, it's good to read up on vision, on the strategy, and understand where the company is currently headed. Without that, you don't know what to do. You don't know where it's going. You don't know what to, you know, um, what what to fine tune. So this is really important to understand the current situation. And one of the first things you should be doing as well to understand the company and the situation you're in is take your own medicine. This means using your products you're in charge of, down to the details, understand what problems they solve for users what problems they don't solve, and basically, you know, where are the friction points, where are the value points, what do you, what do you have handed over to you? So that's the first, uh, the first big area. Second big area, Jonas. Yes, and just to leave it where you left it, uh, Chris, in terms of knowing your own product, uh, we discussed this in the lead-in to this episode, that, that in, in fact, you need to be the most knowledgeable of the products, uh, even though there may be a product between you, product team between you and the product, uh, understand it in detail because the same goes for for getting to know and understand your customers and the vertical you're in you need to be the most knowledgeable you have to have an in-depth understanding of their pains uh, that you're looking to resolve uh, but also if and and where your product and offering provides a value uh, for your customers it starts with the data Look available at available dashboards, data uh, metrics dashboards that are available to you within the company. Study the KPIs, figure out what's really going on into the uh, to the low, low detail. You also need to look at the market and the competitive space to understand where your company and your product are placed at the moment. And here, don't rely on what you get told by by your new colleagues. Make your uh, make up your own opinion. And make sure that what is perceived as to be the position in the market is, in effect, from your point of view, also also the case. And then finally, but most importantly, in my opinion, which is to start meeting your customers. Spend as much quality time with your customers, learn about their pains, to you know, st- sit with them, understand what's, what's going on in their, in their way of doing things. Uh, and then you get a real idea whether or, and where value is created uh, with your product. Well, so I'll quickly come back to what you said, which is really interesting, is when you start digging in the KPIs of a product and you talk to people in the company, I find that you usually get two quite different versions of reality where you ask about customers and people say, oh, yeah, yeah, they're happy, they're happy. And then you go look in the KPIs and you start to create your own reports. You look at the churn you realize that actually the situation is not as you've been told and people are not using the dashboard, for example, as much as they would. Um, so it's quite interesting to to know what the real situation is, to, to attack it from both angles. So um, just to add that to what you said. Um, yeah, and so just to move on uh, then a bit, where after you've learned you what, who the people are, after you've talked to everyone, after you've uh, learned about the product, the strategy, after you've looked at the KPIs, um, and and started meeting customers, of course, as you do these things, you will start to make a picture of where do you want to go with this. And so being ahead of product, everybody expects you to have a roadmap. So uh, let's build one. And so 
what you uh, the, the the next thing you should be doing most likely is that based on your assessments, uh, develop a clear vision, develop a product vision, and develop a product strategy that are similar or divergent from what you had before. But you know, in reality, it's always going to be somewhere in the middle. But you do need to articulate um, a way forward because that will be expected of you, first of all. But that also will allow you to discuss with the whole company where things should be going, align people, align the teams. Um, so you do need to build that, right? The um, existing roadmap that you will have handed to you uh, as you joined, and sometimes you don't, sometimes there are no roadmaps, but if you handed a roadmap, um, you will need to adapt that as well. And so you'll start with the relatively short-term items. You will move on to longer-term items as you get a better and better picture. Uh, but you do need, as soon as you can, uh, to come up with, with this uh, sort of communication tool because you can start to uh, communicate with the company you can start to align with everyone else and you know that will establish your position as a product leader as well within the different stakeholders uh, environment so that people start to take you seriously quite quickly and lastly as i said you know the, the, don't forget to communicate so sometimes you communicate only with the executive sometimes people communicate only uh, to the squads that they work who they work with and so um, you know people then forget to communicate with the customers and when i say people and i did this many many times of course uh, it's hard to remember to uh, spend time with everyone. It's easy to think, well, I actually need to, you know, uh, boil down into this one thing uh, and do this. I need to work hard on this area. But actually, it's really important to do the rounds, so to speak, as a head of product and make sure you have time to get feedback from everyone, basically. And then comes the time to go do things, right? <laughs> And the point around communicating, right? If you are in, in introducing changes to the product strategy and updating the roadmap, obviously everyone has to be included in that regard. The same goes as you, as the leader of a function and a product line, that you continually assess whether you have the right allocation of resources. So resources in this context is the team, obviously. It's also budget, ensuring that the team has enough budget. And finally, that they have the right technology available for them to build the solutions that you expect from them. And this has to be evaluated on an ongoing basis, in particular when you're going through a, a period of strategic changes where you want to take the product or the products in a new direction. Then secondly, you want to, you want to define new key performance indicators and metrics that, will track you, that you can track your performance with or the pro performance of your products. That means that that um, if if you if you f in your in your onboarding into the to, to your new role you find that that the metrics and the KPIs in place already and being measured on are not fully uh, showing uh, the the performance and and the the domain of your product you need to include new new ones so you track exactly what you're aiming for uh, that's a way of getting your stakeholders on board but also a way to empower your teams uh, to pursue. Uh, uh, you know, particular targets for, for, for their product. And then finally, uh, pilot programs, pilot programs, experiments, they have many different names, but it implement a way of validating new ideas and changes to the products. It de-risks it. People as a stakeholder management tool, as a way of keeping your team engaged, it actually works really well to put forward ideas, set them through a validation, and, and see what makes it uh, past uh, and, and onto a roadmap for implementation. And, uh, you know, I jump in right now at this point because you said uh, you, you want to set the KPIs and you want to set metrics for what you are aiming for. And the word I like for this is what good looks like. You need to figure out what good looks like for you and therefore then aim for that. Joining a company that's a, a large organization, uh, it can be several hundred, it can be several thousand people, you'll find that, that there's less, for lack of a better word, strategic fluidity than you'll find in small organizations that may be uh, you know, early on in their company maturity stage. And that also means that you as a product leader are less, uh, has le have less flexibility in terms of coming up with something completely new. You have to accommodate uh, the strategic focus that's already there within the company and ensure that your strategy and your vision for the products a type uh, underlying or supporting the the broader strategy that means that that your longer term strat roadmap uh, is in even more important than it would be 
uh, in smaller companies where a shorter term uh, view uh, g- can be more appropriate. So ensure that read, uh, have uh, you know, review what or kind of organization you're in, review the strategic maturity, and then uh, position and, and evolve your product uh, strategy, your own product strategy accordingly. Nice, absolutely, um, and you're absolutely right. I made that mistake in a big organization once. <laughs> I didn't come up with a long enough roadmap and uh, had to go back to the drawing board. But uh, anyway, so kind of runway. Yeah, I know. <laughs> anyway, I'll finish by uh, I'll finish this actually uh, super interesting list uh, by mentioning that happy teams will make you successful. And there is pressure. There's always business pressure. There's always organizational pressure. Celebrate the wins along the way. It's about the journey. The small wins do count. And you know nobody wants to run a marathon in the rain with uh, you know uh, just a damp uh, environment. You want to have the nice moments along the way so do celebrate the small wins and everybody will be just happier and just in general deliver better stuff and that was it so we hope this was useful please keep the feedback coming subscribe to our podcast and keep track of new episodes from the 10 minute product podcast thank you very much